I've been saying it for years now, if you're building a new computer or upgrading an old one, an SSD should be at the top of your list. For budget builds or upgrading an older system, this means getting something like Crucial's MX300, a SATA drive that offers extreme snappiness at a reasonable price. Those building a more extreme desktop system will no doubt be aiming for something more like an NVMe SSD. The PCI Express bus provides so much more bandwidth for unleashing these high speed storage devices. Not all NVMe drives are created equally though, and we saw this last year when we checked out Intel's rather hopeless SSD 600P. That model was plagued by poor sustained write performance, which would see it drop below hard drive light performance before too long. At the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Samsung SSD 960 series, which pretty much set the bar in terms of price and performance. To date, nothing can compete with the 960 Pro series, and the 2TB version has been my weapon of choice for more than half a year now. The 960 EVO series is extremely good, though I feel like if you're going to spend this much money on a high-speed SSD, you might as well ensure that it uses MLC NAND, and not the slightly less reliable TLC stuff. Since the release of Samsung's 960 series back in October of 2016, numerous challenges have stepped forward in an effort to try and snatch the performance crown from the Korean company's grasp. So far, none have been able to do so. One such company was Corsair with their 4 Series MP500, and I checked out the 480GB model back in January. In short, the MP500 was a great all-rounder, boasting decent performance and a high endurance rating. The downside being that in terms of pricing, it simply couldn't compete. At $325 US, it matched the 512GB 960 Pro, and given it was quite a bit slower, this made Corsair's NVMe SSD a tough sell. Today, pricing has improved and the MP500 series is far more competitive. The flagship 480GB model, for example, costs just 53 cents per gigabyte at $255, whereas the 960 Pro 5GB comes in at a slightly higher 58 cents per gigabyte, as it can now be had for $300 US. The MP500 took advantage of Fizon's PCIe 3.0x4 NVMe SSD controller, dubbed PS5007-E7, along with Toshiba's 15nm MLC NAND. A number of other brands have released their own versions, such as Patriot with their Hellfire M2, and PNY released a catchy sounding CS2030. More recently, in mid-March, Zotac came out with the Sonics, which also dons the Fizer controller into Toshiba's MLC memory. However, they opted for a half-height, half-length PCI Express 3.0x4 form factor, rather than the much more compact M.2 form factor. It was expected that other brands such as Corsair, Patriot, Mushkin, PMY, and Kingston, for example, would soon offer similar products. So it comes as little surprise that Corsair has just released a HHL, that is of course a half-height, half-length. PCI Express 3.0x4 SSD, once again using the Fizen PS5007-E7 controller and 15nm Toshiba MLC memory. So, is this just an MP500 on a PCIe adapter card, or is it something more? Well, thankfully, it is a little more than that. This isn't an M.2 drive mounted on an adapter card. That's the kind of thing we often see from Kingston. Rather, the components are directly mounted to the PCB, and this comes with a few advantages that I'll touch on shortly. For now, let's talk specs. The Neutron Series NX500 comes in either 400 or 800 gigabyte capacities, and of course, the form factor is HHL. Meanwhile, the MP500 series offers 120 gigabyte, 240GB and 480GB capacities using the M.2 2280 form factor. Both use the same PCIe 3.0x4 interface, Fizen controller and 15nm MLC NAND flash memory. The DRAM cache capacity has been upgraded, previously the 480GB MP500 sported a 512MB cache, the NX500 400GB has been upgraded with a 1GB cache, while the 800GB model gets a much larger 2GB cache and both still make use of DDR3 memory here. As you might expect, the quoted sequential read and write speeds are the same. 3 gigabytes read coupled with a 2.4 gigabytes per second write. The random read and write IOPS performance has been improved by between 20 and 30 percent, and the NX500 series offers up to 300,000 IOPS when reading and 270,000 when writing. Meanwhile, the endurance rating remains the same, as does the power consumption. That said, the larger 800GB model comes with an impressive endurance rating of 1,396 terabytes written. Finally, the warranty period has been upgraded from 3 years to a much more competitive 5 years, so that's great to see. So at this point, you might be wondering, 
what's new here. Frankly, in terms of specifications, as you've just seen, nothing really other than the form factor, but that is kind of a big deal. Although the M.2 form factor is all the rage now and support is as strong as it's ever been, those new X299 boards, for example, take advantage of multiple drives, and the upcoming X399 boards are set to do the same. However, this small, compact form factor, while very impressive, is brutal on the components. Heat is the main issue here, and getting rid of it is the problem. With no room for adequate cooling, keeping the controller cool is a real challenge, and it's something most M.2 drives fail to do, making them unsuitable for sustained throughput. The Samsung SSD 960 EVO, which I have on hand for example, goes from an idle temperature of around 30 degrees to over 60 degrees within a minute of sustained data transfer, and at this point the right performance is throttled back quite heavily. That said, the throttling doesn't help put the temperatures in check, and in our 100 gigabyte transfer test, temps peak at 90 degrees. So while it's possible to write around 20 gigabytes of data at over 1.5 gigabytes per second, going beyond that reduces the throughput to around a third of the original performance. Unfortunately, I don't have the MP500 drive on hand for comparison. Currently, Tim's using that in his Ryzen 7 editing rig, so the Samsung SSD 960 EVO will have to do. Moving to the NX500, we started the 100GB transfer test with a drive temp of 34 degrees, pretty much what we saw from the Evo. However, by the end of the test, that's the write and read test, the drive temp never exceeded 49 degrees, and we never saw any kind of throttling. So for sustained writes over 20GB in size, the NX500 was actually more than twice as fast as the 960 Evo, and you can expect it to be quicker than the 960 Pro as well. Granted, it's unlikely most of you will often move more than, say, 20GB worth of data in one hit, but when you do the NX500 will perform much better. The reason the NX500 works so much better is down to the fact that that huge chunk of aluminium strapped onto the front side of the PCB is connected to the surface of the Fizen controller using a thermal pad. So while you will have to sacrifice a PCI Express expansion slot, you do so in the knowledge of knowing you'll be getting the maximum performance under all conditions. Alright, let's jump into the benchmarks for a few more quick tests. First up I checked out the sequential read and write performance in the AS SSD benchmark and here the NX500 provided very similar results to the MP500 as expected. Corsair claims the same sequential performance for both the 400GB NX500 and 480GB MP500. Moving on, the 4K 64 thread performance was also very similar. The NX400 was slightly down on the MP500 here, though these results are pretty close to margin of error stuff. The access time performance is a little off, the write results are much the same for both the NX400 and MP500, while the newer NX400 lacks a little when it comes to read access time. That said, the results aren't bad. Moving along to our on-disk copy test results, the NX500 again demonstrates MP500 light performance. It edged ahead in our game copy test, though only by a 5% margin. I should note though that neither of these tests move more than 3GB worth of data, so throttling won't be a problem here. The idea isn't to move around large volumes of data, but instead hit the drives with a mixture of small and large compressed and non-compressed files. Finally, we have the 7-zip file extraction test, and here we do work with a large 38GB archive, and as you can see, the Samsung 960 EVO was previously good for around 1GB per second, it now drops down to 660MB per second for the average transfer speed. That said, the NX500 was still quite a bit slower, and despite avoiding any throttling issues, isn't really able to make a step forward from the MP500, an SSD which clearly didn't suffer from any throttling issues. Loading Windows, the NX500 took just 5.4 seconds, which is longer than the 4.4 seconds the MP500 took, but better than the 6.3 seconds the 960 EVO takes. The Call of Duty Infinite Warfare level load time test took just 8.1 seconds, which is very impressive given the 960 EVO took 8.4 seconds, and the MP500 11 seconds, so a good improvement over the MP500 here. Okay, so time to sum up Corsair's new NX500 SSD. Hmm. I'm coming away with this one with similar feelings to that of my MP500 review. And I guess that makes sense as they are very similar products. In a nutshell, my only real issue with the MP500 was the price, and that was a shame given the drive suffered no real weaknesses. 
Yes, it is slower than the Samsung 960 series, sometimes quite a lot slower in the benchmarks, but even so, overall the MP500 was very capable and at no time did it feel anything but blistering fast. My point is, even power users won't notice a difference between the MP500 and the 960 Pro for the vast majority of workloads. The same is true when looking at the NX500, it's another solid all-rounder and under prolonged torture won't buckle, though neither did the MP500. Once again, the issue here is the asking price. The 400 gigabyte model that I reviewed will be incoming at $320 US. And while that's a better price than the Zotac Sonics, for example, it's still significantly more than the current asking price of the MP500 480 gigabyte and Samsung 960 Evo 500 gigabyte. In fact, it's more than the 960 Pro 512 gigabyte as well. Pricing will no doubt improve over time. That said though, there's really no way Corsair can match the current price of the MP500 with this new NX500 drive. Uh, it's clearly a more costly product to produce. There's a lot more uh, material, a lot more product here when compared to your standard M.2 device. So keep that in mind. And given that there is really no advantage to this product over the MP500, the MP500 doesn't throttle or have any performance issues when sustaining large writes. So, Paying a premium for the NX500 is a bit of a tough sell. Uh, paying a premium for the 960 Pro, on the other hand, to avoid throttling issues. Now, that would be well worth it, so take note, Samsung. <laughs> anyway, in short, the Corsair NX500 is a great SSD. It offers solid performance, it runs cool as you've just seen, has an excellent endurance rating, and comes with a competitive five-year warranty. The only problem being it needs to be, I'd say, at least 20% cheaper than the current MSRP. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. A good product just needs to be a little more competitively priced. I'm your host, Steve. If you like this video, you know what to do.